Icarus was supposed to be a second Earth, some kind of paradise brought to you by the best scientific minds in the universe. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, wonder they called it Icarus. Big planet-sized dream that came crashing down. They had no idea what they were in for. No one did. I f***ed it up. Pure and simple. I've done a lot of crazy in my time, eh? But Icarus, <laughs> that was next level. If you couldn't find food, you died. If you couldn't find oxygen, you died. If you couldn't find shelter from the storms, you died. No. She was an engineer. Xeno engineer. She was sent with the team to terraform the place, so... Yeah, she was there when it all went to hell. The other guys, they left as soon as they could. But not Mo. That wasn't her style. She was there to make money. Like the rest of us. People died on Icarus all the time, you know? You just... tried not to think about it. What happened to her was no accident, no way. Well, the journey to Icarus was brutal. It was four light years from Earth. 30 trillion miles. And two years in long sleep. I mean... <laughs> Talk about jet lag. <laughs> we were the first cohort. We were the first wave of cowboys. You know, it was, a, it was a whole new planet. It was unreal. Then reality kicked in. Oh, they opened up Icarus to prospectors when all the terraforming went So I signed on as soon as I could. She offered to drop with us. She wanted to show us around like, like was it her apartment or something. <laughs> Well, I figure she just wanted to see how we do on the first drop. It was like going back in time and seeing the Earth a million years ago. The trees, the plants, the animals, they're from Earth. I mean, the bio team had adapted them after the terraforming went to but Jesus Christ, it does your head in at first. Outside the zone, it was different. People always think that we had a bunch of advanced tech up there, but we had nothing. We spent everything just trying to get there. We're like cave people in spacesuits, those first few drops. If we needed uh, shelter or tools or something, well, we had to make it ourselves. I barely made it back to the dropship alive that first time. Yeah, I got better, of course. I mean, Mo taught me some shit. She taught me how to build shelters, find oxygen. But the best thing she taught me was, you got to respect that planet. Not to fear it. She was smart. I mean, cocky as hell, but look, she'd been part of the terraforming group, right? So she knew the planet inside and out. I mean, literally, right? She spoke about it all the time, you know, about the first time terraforming it wasn't going to work. And about finding the first exotics. I'm just saying, doesn't it feel like a coincidence that they declared the planet uninhabitable just when they discovered the most valuable material in the universe. Weird, eh? Hey, I ain't complaining. I did okay out of it. It was the exotics that killed the terraforming. Screwed with the enzymes. Then again, they changed everything. I mean, without the exotics, there never would have been a first cohort. Because it was all about the exotics. You find them, you sell them back at the station, you get more gear, you go back down, find more, drop, survive, and repeat. On Icarus, um, a handful of exotics would get you uh, a new suit, uh, a radar, uh, a rifle. But on Earth, it would buy you anything you wanted. I talked about her, her mum and her brother all the time kind of life she could give them thanks to the exotic she'd found. She didn't stay because she needed the money. She'd made her money. She stayed because she loved it. We all did. It was addictive. She was addicted. The second you felt comfortable on the surface, you take your eye off the mission clock. And that's how people died. It happened all the time, eh? You know, people wouldn't miss the window to get back to their ship, and then there was no way they'd get back to the station, and that was it. Never see them again. They had to die, that's for sure. The drop started off fine. 
None of us had ever been to that part of the planet before, not even Mo. Prospecting in unfamiliar areas, I, I hated it. But there was always more exotics and undiscovered areas, so none of us knew what to expect. Not back then, but Mo, she was like a moth to a flame. Didn't even notice she'd wandered off. If you're asking me if I feel guilty for what happened to her, I do. We looked for her as long as we could. But you know, there's a big storm coming and you don't hang about for those ever. The bear attack is my guess. The forests were full of them. I mean, anything could have happened. It wasn't an accident. Mo didn't come back because she didn't want to come back. She knew she couldn't go home, not after what had happened to that planet and the part she had played in it. Look, Mo didn't want to die. She... She was right where she wanted to be. Ma, John, you How are you guys? You got a girlfriend yet, bro? <laughs> um, sorry, I haven't been in touch. My bad. Just want to say that I'm fine. Today is my last drop. I wish that maybe if the terraforming had worked, you could have been here. Not what people could have been here. You guys, thank you. You know, I'll see you guys soon.
can we get confirmation from the chat that you can hear us? <laughs> yes. Yes, oh, I can hear Hallelujah. Us. Awesome. <laughs> Great start to our very first stream. Thank you so much for your patience, and we know you are so hyped for today. This is our very first time that we're showing live gameplay, and we are terribly excited. So today I've got with me Dean Hall, who you all should know by now. He's a CEO, and I've also got Brian Hicks, who is the executive producer, and I am your host, Lori Pops, and the community manager. So it's really wonderful to have you there. Uh, I've seen and hashtag going through the chat, hashtag remember Mo. Uh, which is uh, is quite funny. <laughs> we love to see it, love to see it. All right, so today what we've got for you is our first 30 minutes of gameplay. We're going to be taking you through uh, landing on the planet, uh, the first sort of tasks that you will have to do to stay alive, the building blocks for what you will do down the road, which we'll show you on later streams. Um, for our players today, we have Alyssa, who is a assistant producer. We've got Drew, who is a world builder. And we've also got Jake and Francis, who are programmers. So we've got four players uh, for you today. And how are we feeling? Good. I just saw this, this hashtag remember, uh, remember, remember Brian or remember <laughs> Hicks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, no, Brian's good. One it's, it's, it's awesome to... To finally show the game off yeah. i think all of us have been really excited to actually get back into you know that, that sort of space that we were at with the mod and stuff like that um for DayZ, and um you know just with the resources we have now i think some of the things we're going to be able to do and yeah start this process with you and that to actually engage with the community about the game get yeah. feedback on it yeah. and start that whole process is pretty, and pretty awesome. I've been so excited for this Twitch stream. Uh, we all put it together fairly quickly and I'm mega impressed <laughs> aside from the, the audio issues, but everything we've done here is really great and I'm so proud of the team for putting it all together. Uh, so Brian, you came in a bit late this morning. We weren't sure if you were gonna arrive. <laughs> well, nobody's gonna remember that now after all the audio stuff, so. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> That's true. Um, also, on our side table here, you'll see that we've got a uh, little array of things. We've got a golden wolf head, wolf skeleton, and we've got some lollies, which unfortunately we won't be eating, though they're very enticing. Awesome. So, the live action documentary, which you just watched prior to um, the issues, was awesome. Uh, we've been so proud to have that for you guys to view. It's a really good indicator of the type of law that we've got going on in Icarus. And uh, I would love to have one of you explain, perhaps, Dean, you know, what was the uh, integral sort of focus with um, the first documentary trailer there? Well, I think um, uh, we'd always wanted with with DayZ to develop a, a sort of rich story. And, you know, with having to deal with everything that was going on and, you know, keep, keep development heading in the right direction, we just never made time for it. And I think at the studio here, because you know, the studio's been around for a bit and we're really trying to find a way, how do you, you know, make a game as well as make a universe for the game. And so, you know, we work really heavily with Henry the writer, um, Brian kept on me to make sure I actually went through the stuff Henry <laughs> put together. Um, you know, one of our producers here, Rachel, comes from a film background and, you know, we found a great company to work with. The casting went super well. It was just one of those things where it all came together. And I was sort of reflecting on it with Henry, the writer, the other day. I, I know it was me and Hen Henry coming up with the stuff, but I'm excited to see what what's next for the characters in the universe. So, you know, I'm sitting here like, man, I want to I want to hear more about this. Like, yeah. I want to see what's happening. Um, so I, I think that's a, that's a good place to be. Yeah, and I mean, the reception from you, the community, was absolutely amazing. Uh, everybody loves Mo and wants to know what happened to Mo. And, um, you know, when we released it, we didn't really know what you guys would grab onto. Um, and now we've got those ideas and, you know, we're having discussions behind the scenes on, you know, what stands out the most when we're um, talking about lore. Uh, so, Brian, what were your thoughts on that? Did you have any uh, creative input to, to the documentary? Uh, mostly just um, echoing concerns that we might have on different shot lists. and mm -hmm. uh, I think it was early on uh, something I wanted to focus on was kind of ensuring that the gameplay shots mm -hmm. really communicated um, the experience that we were trying to get mm -hmm. from 
yeah. what was an average Icarus session. Uh, overall, I think, I think tackling Henry's input uh, for building an actual, you know, doing some actual lore world building in Icarus versus you know what we failed to be able to do in Daisy, uh, it was a snowball effect. You know, there was a lot of apprehension at first, I think, and then as we got work in from Henry, especially. When we started seeing the the, uh, the dailies on on yeah. the, the trailer, it really started to say. I saw it, and, and Dean was like, he went from like, uh, we'll see how this goes to, oh no, I, I really like this. Yeah. So that was a buy-in for me for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you would have seen our Twitch gaming um, uh, interview this morning with Dean. Had to wake up super early for that. Four but... o'clock. <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning. I had a, I had a nap before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that was really cool uh, to have the Twitch gaming team uh, interview us as well. Um, prior to that, we showed them the documentary trailer, and I swear one of the uh, producers for Twitch gaming started crying, <laughs> which I thought was, you know, we we really wanted to get those feelings, um, you know, involved with you, and you know, really sort of spike that. Um, but no, I'm really looking forward to today's show. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. Uh, we do want to have our different Twitch streams because there will be more in the future. We do want to show you uh, little bits at a time so you can sort of gradually grasp what's going on in the world. And um, so first of all... Well, someone pointed out, oh. I was playing Eurotruck Simulator 2 um, prior and, and almost during the Twitch <laughs> thing. But the host thought it was cool, so, you know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's really good to see uh, a few Twitch streamers in the chat. Prawlin, I see you, another New Zealand Twitch streamer. I've seen Wild from Australia. I saw Bike Man earlier. And everyone else, thank you so much. Um, we've you. got our two wonderful Discord mods, um, Alethea and also Wilbur. And we've got some Twitch staff um, as mods as well. So make sure to say hello to them and uh, interact with them in the chat and um, behave yourselves. It so, is really, really cool to see, um, I guess, you know, a lot of people that we'd known and stuff like that. Yeah. I've definitely felt like, you know, in some ways we've been in hibernation, but I know for me, I didn't want to come back with something unless, you know, we were bringing something new to the table. And, and I think um, we feel confidently that session-based survival is a way to really reinvigorate and try something yeah. new. And I think, as game developers, we should be trying to push the envelope a bit and try new stuff and do things. And I think that the best antidote to making mistakes there is a good relationship with the community. We lost that um, because of, well, my fault, really, with the standalone. But we really had it with Daisy the Mod. So I think, yeah, my hope is that our regular streams like this become a great way for us to showcase what we're doing. And then, you know, thanks to, to you being able to build that you know, relationship with the community to figure out, okay, what didn't make sense about this? What should we, you know, refine? Yeah. And that gives us time to refine this game before uh, everyone else is out there playing it. Yeah, definitely. Now we're really uh, community orientated and thanks for having me. <laughs> so should we switch to some gameplay? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know where the chat wants to see yeah. gameplay. I feel like they just want to hear me monologue maybe, and talk Maybe we should pretend that simulator. it's not working. And we should probably just switch to like long, drawn-out text status reports where <laughs> I just pontificate about how much I love survival games and occasionally throw in an animated GIF that we've shown mm -hmm. multiple times before. Or I change a production plan <laughs> completely and you facepalm. Yeah, you must have video of that. That sounds short. very entertaining. Yeah. All right, let's go. We've got Drew. Alyssa, Francis, and Jake, you will be seeing, excuse me, you will be seeing uh, Alyssa's uh, point of view. So she's now just jumping off the drop ship. <laughs> Eventually. All right, there we go. So what are we looking at? What is, what is this Icarus? It's our first view of coming off the drop ship. What's going on? So, you know, your classic survival game is about um, uh, it's about basically just yeeting stuff into your inventory. So you're, you know, you're going around, you're collecting stuff. That's a you know standard loop of of, of what you're going through, and um, you know it's it's that first moment in Minecraft when you're you know bashing trees and pulling them in. And, and I think the the whole foundation of our project was to focus on those core first mechanics. Mm. So we've really iterated and continuing to iterate on all the basic stuff. Uh, you know, gathering trees, chopping down trees, all that kind of stuff. 
Awesome. So who had most of the decisions on, you know, what kind of shrubs you can harvest, flowers and all the flora out there? Um, well, I mean, we, we've got a, we've been working with a great concept team um, who, uh, you, you know, many of them came from Grindy Gear Games and on Path of Exile. And, um, you know, they've been fantastic at basically uh, prototyping a lot of, you know, really awesome stuff and things like that for us to get through. Uh, we've got a really great world building team. Shut we've been going through and place, hand placing all that to yeah. have a really good experience. Oh, that's so great. And Brian, yourself, how you've been with the team for quite a while now, I believe. Was it about a year and about a, a year. half? About a year, yeah. So when you first joined the Icarus team, what were your sort of first impressions on when you had your first drop on Icarus? Well, I mean, I'll be honest. Initially, I was like, you know, it's 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 an it's a, a good slice of some core gameplay mechanics. Dean might recall specifically what stands out for me. I guess more interesting than my first drop was when it first grabbed me. Right. Um, I think we had just actually moved into the building we're in now. And I had uh, during a during a play test, which at that time I think we were doing twice a week play tests. During that play test, um, I had myself. I think I might have I might have actually had Alyssa or Drew in there. Um, and the goal, obviously, being to find the exotics. Um, it the idea of of having to you know kind of almost to the tune of uh, how I enjoy playing Subnautica, making these micro bases, have to make these outposts as I explore the world. And look for the exotic resource started to grab me, and I, I thought about you know the progress. I hypothetically, because mm -hmm. at that point we didn't have the the full experience of spending those exotics. The idea of being able to progress my player outside of my character mm -hmm. and continue that going. Oh, and the next drops can be even better because I've got these exotics and I'll get this sweet gear. Even though it even, wasn't even in game, the the theory of it <laughs> just grabbed me, and I think it was what was it like? Seven, eight o'clock, everyone's leaving and I'm still doing my drop telling people, no, 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 I'm getting it. I'm going to find the exotic. Mm -hmm. It really, that, that, that was uh, I don't know, nine, ten months mm -hmm. ago, really stood out for me. Yeah, and imagine what these players, when they finally get their hands on it, they're just going to jump in and just, they're going to be so excited. Um, I just want to add that, yes, we have noticed there is a bit of lag in the stream. Um, so our apologies about that. We'll try to get that fixed as soon as possible. Um, you never know what can go wrong <laughs> during your first time uh, on a Twitch stream for us. So we'll get that fixed. But thank you so much for bearing with us. Yeah, um, it's, it's coming through on our whole it, um, on our whole loop. So we suspect it's probably on the capture end. Yeah, yeah. So this isn't what we see when we're playing the game. It's just on your end. Um, so oxide. You need to pick up oxide in order to breathe. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? Yeah. So um. You know, a survival game at its core is about layering in those tensions, right? And, you know, we really wanted to make it feel like it was, you know, you versus the planet. And so we have these different layers of, of survival. And, and so the idea of the planet is that it's this failed terraforming experiment um, that, you know, humanity devoted all this effort in. And um, the uh, partial pressure of the oxygen, it's sufficient for plants, um, it's sufficient for fire, but it's not quite good enough for humans. And also the very nature of the exotics is just dangerous to humans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got your suit and um, luckily there's this uh, oxygen mineral that's around, um, you know, very similar to uh, the emergency masks and planes have a, a mineral in them that um, when burned turns to oxygen. So you can take this oxide, you can just throw it in your Enviro suit and, uh, yeah, and, and breathe on it. Or you can actually take it, put it in an oxygen bladder and um, uh, um, you know, basically concentrate it into oxygen tanks and stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it is a, um, a very powerful thing if you run out of oxygen because it does run out quite quickly. It ca can catch you off guard like it has caught me off guard a couple of times when I first started playing. So you do, um, I would recommend probably just stockpiling on that when you first drop and uh, give yourself enough time to, to go and really get into the game. So as you can see now on stream, uh, we're chopping down some trees. So we're all of the trees handcrafted and placed as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, everything was hand placed. Oh, that is so awesome. So, um, you know, we, we, we worked a lot in process for how we're creating the worlds. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really just iterated on the, the, the process that we, yeah, we used to create them. 
and um, you know we worked a lot with Epic. They've been fantastic about you know giving us advice about how we were making the game, um, you know to deliver the full area and the map um, that you're playing on. Every tree is uh, you can chop down, every stone you can you know voxel oh, mine, and you know you can get forest fires that are in a storm at the moment. The storm can blow down trees, uh, lightning can strike and start a big fire. So yeah, you know it's. Um, uh, it was about being able to achieve a sense of scale, and that was something that we felt was missing, um, that we wanted to sort of bring in an evolution for. Right, that's so awesome, and we will be uh, building a cabin very shortly. So at the moment the devs are going around collecting, um, picking up food as well, so they can eat, you also need to feed yourself. And, and as you can see, it's raining. Uh, so the weather does what it wants, doesn't it, Ryan? Could you perhaps explain a bit more about the weather system? Well, I don't know. I, I think one of the things that stood out for me um, when when we first started talking about me uh, coming over and joining the team was uh, specifically my experiences very early on in um, Conan Exiles when they first shipped it mm -hmm. in the sandstorm. It's one of the things that stood out as like the idea of needing shelter, um, of wanting to escape from the storm. I think really um, lately, you know, we've been doing a lot of talk about um, increasing the threat of the storm on the player. As we really dialed in on increasing the threat of the storm on the structures and the objects that they might place around it. But uh, for me, uh, definitely within the last month, one of the focuses I've, I've, I've been pushing for and love to see is you know, if I'm just traipsing through the woods here and a storm hits, I need I need a drive to make me want to build a quick shelter, uh, to get inside, and um, you know, with the the, the kind of uh, almost almost uh, sheer chaos of, of the storms and the types of storms for biomes rolling in, I think that will continue to drive uh, players to make these little micro bases as they as they explore. It's a big threat, the storms. Yeah. So in terms of evolution for survival games, we wanted to deliver not only really good building mechanics, but a reason to build stuff. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. When I first jumped in, I think I was bombarded by a lightning storm and it caught things on fire. And uh, it was really interesting just to see, you know, I looked right up to the sky and I could see these little lightnings just happening. And it was like really intricate. Um, it was really intriguing to me. And it's a very cool experience and it changes uh, you know, when you're trying to build a, a cabin like they are now, you have to be mindful of where you're placing um, the cabin in terms of, you know, what the weather is like and what it's doing. Awesome. Alrighty, so crafting. We've got, we can see it on the screen right now. Um, walk us through the basic crafting weapons that you use to get things done. <laughs> the storm is just tearing apart that foundation. Yeah, yeah so, um, you know, I, I guess uh, it's it's not just uh, about gathering the materials. Obviously, you know, you need mm. to be able to spend the materials and yeah. actually, you know, grab stuff. Um, so we wanted to have multiple areas of progression. So there's obviously the planetary progression, which is a big part of it, um, and uh, you know, that's that's what your player, oh, sorry, your character that you've created is progressing. And then there's the progression between drops, which occurs uh, in in you know in, in orbit. So and on the planet at that basic crafting level, yeah, you're craft, crafting the tools that you might, might need rather than bringing everything with you from orbit because, you know, you've spent all your money to get to this, this planet and prospect. And also why, you know, why use up space in your dropship that you could otherwise fill up with exotics? Yeah. So that's the thing. Imagine you're going on a journey. You don't want to fill your car up with stuff. You know there's going to be stuff at the destination. So you're sort of living off the land. And that really allowed us to strike a really nice balance, um, you know, between, um, uh, like, you know, sci-fi stuff, which allows us to do some really cool things yeah. in a survival game, but also... Um, you know, through and into uh, more like prehistoric stuff and yeah. actually experiencing building a beautiful cabin and stuff like that. Yeah, I think what I like most about this game is that, you know, you are sort of a futuristic, you come from a futuristic background, but when you drop down on Icarus, you do have to start from scratch. And so I think, you know, understandably, there was a little bit of um, separation and confusion uh, from people first looking at the game. But um, now that you can see, you know, what, what they're doing here, um, why they have to start from scratch and 
how uh, the sessions actually matter. So each session is building into the next and into the next. And um, of course, if you die, uh, you know, you, you do get left behind if you uh, don't catch on to your dropship in time. And then you're back to square one. And um, I just I just think that is a definite like key feature that separates our game from, from the other survival games out there. Um, you can also see when they are building. Like wolves. Yeah, yeah, we did talk about the wolves that they would have to uh, kill them if they if they came. Speaking up. Speaking of running out of <laughs> oxygen, they are running out of oxygen. Yes, I think as yes. well for our oh, for our tech team, they might want to look. I I, I reckon we've got a. <laughs> I reckon we've got it plugged into USB 2. This is exactly what I did with the Elgato yeah. uh, cam links. Yeah. I plugged it into a, a through USB cable. So yeah. there you go, J-Rod. Look at that one. <laughs> I think they had in-game sound, but they turned it off. Oh, there's no in-game sound? Oh. We'll get them to turn the uh, in-game sound on. Um, how about we tune in and listen to uh, the devs talking to one another and see how they're actually working together. Bearing in mind, they've been playing this a lot. Um, yeah. So they, they have been playing efficient. a lot. Uh, yeah. They're very efficient, yeah. When I jump in even now, I'm way slower <laughs> than these guys. I'll just be still chopping down trees at this moment. So yeah. someone asked a good question about the timer being this short. Um, we've uh, sort of been experimenting with a variety of different um, uh, of different times. So this one's obviously just over a day, um, but we definitely think that uh, people's drops will last for varying length of time. So they will actually be able to choose from um, the list they've given which drop they want to go down on. So there's quite a bit of agency there for um, for yeah what people want to do. So you know, they're looking through the different tiers. Um, that's all just your player's progression on, uh, sorry, your character's progression um, in terms of tech tree. Um, again, we, we, we really wanted some, some agency there. We, we haven't, um, we definitely haven't balanced this yet though in terms of how many points everything's um, spending. Yeah, you would have noticed um, the chat there that you level up quite quickly. That's just um, for us in our, our current build. So when you level up, when the game eventually comes out, uh, it'll be uh, slower and it'll be, yeah, as Dean said, uh, balanced for you. Cool. Have we got audio on the devs? I just need a bit more wood to make a skinning bin. If not, then it's oh, just I've got a skinning bin. Yeah, it's just an awkward oh. experience. <laughs> They're doing it now. <laughs> I'm putting wood and stone and stuff in the chest just next to the crafting bench. Um, I'll go and get some more wood now. Oops. I'll just put some more chest down. I'm gonna put some oxide. How's your guys' oxygen? Mine's getting pretty low. Mine's getting pretty low as well. Okay, so um, Francis, you're hunting a. Eh? Ah, uh, yes, I just got back there. I have a deer. We need to get some more leather to make some uh, uh, oxygen bladders. Nice. Well, we won't starve now, guys. Um, we got meat. Cool. Can someone make um, a stone face and a smith's meat? Uh, yeah, sure. I think I need to get a bunch of rock for that, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just unlock it. Yeah, well, I think we need a bit more leather for that. So we need. I put a bunch of leather and just fur and stuff in the skinning table. If you want to use that. Oxide dissolver up, um, oh. and I've put as much <coughs> oxide as I have, um, but we just need some bladders. <laughs> um, I'll see if I can bring some more oxide back so we can sort out our oxygen. Oh, shoot! Oh, I there's hear a wolf it. after me. Oh, where are you? The other side of the island. <laughs> <laughs> to the hut. Oh, we, we will see you. 
God damn it. <laughs> I can just hear wolf noises. Where are you, man? I got him, I got him. Nice. It's a close one, Jake. Good work. At least we've got some more leather and meat, though. Yeah. 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 Should we find a campfire somewhere? Oh, maybe not. Why have we not got a campfire yet? <laughs> Don't want to get put on the, fire. We're the first time. Do you want to put one up and I'll uh, put the meat I've got in it? Yeah. Oh, there's actually one in the chest. I made one eggs go. There we go. Okay, it's off to one side, so nobody run through it. <laughs> Maybe we need to put like a fence around it. Yeah. That's a good idea, a, actually. A lesser proof fence. A lesser proof fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, Dean. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you are now Alyssa. Who do you think I am? Oh, we're cooking meat. I am now Alyssa. There's only three meat there, though, so... <laughs> oh, what? I thought I got heaps. Yeah. Oh, There's only three in the chest. <laughs> I have failed you. Oh, uh, we're, we're just making a, making a cabin. We're cooking some meat so we don't die. Wayne's oh, going out hunting, I think. We keep hearing wolves. Yeah, there are a few wolves around. Hey, there's a few on the island. No, we already said that we're not going to do that. <laughs> this time. The only person that will be will be Alyssa. Hey, it'll <laughs> be an accident. A goat will be <laughs> That's true, a goat will Set itself on fire and then into the building. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm really impressed by is that nobody has been like fully hit by a tree yet. True. True. You did that try that hard on the tree. Yeah. I did. I'm just running out of oxygen. Cool. We have one oxygen ladder, so uh, <laughs> we, wow. we're just going <laughs> to, you know, do a hot swap. Should I chop this tree onto the uh, red building? Yeah, you put this. What? Oh, oh, I poor house. What? No. <laughs> I can see it crumbling from the inside. Wait, no! Hee <laughs> 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 just like, hee hee <laughs> 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 oh. no. I mean, it's still livable, I guess. Wait, will the tree catch on fire? If I drop it on there? Uh, <laughs> please. <laughs> I really hope not. It's okay, it's okay. Nice. Nice. The building repairs are still working on the Cool, 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 cool. Uh, that, that tree is stuck up there now. Oh, man, I can't find any oxide anywhere. If we can get some nickel tools, we can run around and find them and get the bunch. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm just more worried about like running out of oxygen and dying. <laughs> There's a little bit in the chest. Ah, oh, there's wolves around here. Has someone made a stone furnace? Shall I try and make? Oh, Go I for it. Some leather. Oh yeah, there's heaps in this skinny table. I like how we've just got some shrubbery on our roof now. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's making is it, it more natural. It is, yeah, it's camouflage from the wolves. Yeah. Remember to eat some food to get your health and stamina up first. Yeah. Oh my god, that deer is you know, way too close to the campfire. Campfire is just like way too close in general. 
You know, I just, I don't know, just I makes me very uncomfortable. Walk outside this door. Okay, I'm gonna build a railing. <laughs> I don't trust like anyone. Cool. I found, I found a bunch of rocks. I'll bring it back now. Man, yeah, we need to get, we need some metal tools. Um, collect it anyway, right? Even if we don't use it. Hello, hello, hello. How's that gameplay? We did get it uh, smoother for you all. And the next stream, we promise that it'll be much better than this. But thank you so much. Uh, things can go wrong on Twitch all the time. And, uh, but at least we've got a good footage for you. So we're inside a cabin. What are we doing? What's going on? So they're going through their loop now to um, smelt uh, the planet's various metal resources. Mm. Um, and you, you can really start to advance through that tech tree. And, you know, I think something that, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot more that we can show and we want, we want to show in the future streams. But being able to, you know, just show that we're, we're really making some good efforts in terms of making your buildings matter. So I see this as they've landed, they, they're, they're very early on in, in playing the game, so they don't have a lot of, uh, well, they don't have any meta stuff. So you can see now they've got a metal um, pick that they've crafted out of smelted metal. That's going to allow them to gather metal much better than before. And, um, you know, it's about that, that progression is, is, is super important. So they've built this initial cabin. Um, this, this little goat runs across the screen. Um, they've, they've, they've built this initial safe cabin. After this, they'd locate where the meta, uh, sorry, the exotics are, and um, you know, with radars. Mm -hmm. um, and even as part of that, they might want to build little cabins to give them safe harbors from yeah. storms, and then later on build cabins along the way. So we're really just amping that idea of you have purposes for all these buildings you're building. Oh, that's awesome. So we are going to run a little bit over time so we can uh, continue to talk about the game and we want to answer some of your questions. So make sure you ch uh, fire them in the chat right now and we will uh, get on to go get on to the questions for you. And um, also the voxel rocks. So who came up with the idea of when you hit a rock, it stays in its uh, formation? Well, I think, um, you know, one of our pillars uh, one of our five pillars that, that we came up with the game was that the base survival mechanics are enjoyable. And I think, you know, Brian, you know, touched on that, uh, you know, what was behind us wanting to sessionize the game, looking at games like Tarkov and, you know, PUBG and, 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 and Fortnite, they have these great combat mechanics. You know, PvP game, it's about combat. We feel that a survival game is about really good dare I say, a visceral um, you know, mechanics. And so we, we spend a lot of time thinking about what would make chopping down a tree fun, what would make mining fun. You can actually find caves that you actually have to dig out with a pickaxe. Um, people have actually dug holes in large rocks and got shelter and, yeah, from them, yeah. from the storm. So our shelter mechanic supports that. Yeah, it would be awesome to see if they did that. Yeah, I think the first time I encountered the uh, caves I could break into, I went in there, and I think we'd been we'd been kind of piling out the idea of a mega resource, and that happened to be in that cave. And I was dropping with a, a collection of, of our team. I broke into the cave, saw the mega resource, and immediately boarded up the outside. I was like, this is where I live now. Don't come in here. You can't, nope, no just don't come in. I kept it all to myself. It was a lot of biome. Now, um, you know, one thing, we're, we're only showing the forest biome here. In the alpine biome, you have a, a, a different set of resources available to you, you know, realistically. So, um, you know, this is kind of a lot of resources all around, but actually, really, you know, stone and that becomes quite important when you go into the alpine biome. Resource breadcrumbing is important mm -hmm. in drive exploration, 100%. We've also been doing a lot of work on caves. Um, uh, that, that should definitely be one of our things. Someone has a question. Do Does anything live inside the caves? Besides me. Yeah. <laughs> Besides Brian. Um, well, we don't want to give away too much, I think. So we'll, we'll leave... 
We'll leave that one. Uh, we've certainly got big plans for stuff. You know, Caves has, is something that we put in at the start, but that we've recently been going back and iterating on more. Mm. So, you know, we've got multiple areas of our development team. We have this one team which is called Vision, which is a design, um, design team, but it's re very cross-functional. And, uh, you know, we've got a really great team there who are actually going, cross-functional team going through, and one of their key focuses now is actually bringing an even better experience to Cave. So we're pretty excited to show off. You can actually see a little bit of Liam, um, one of our uh, artists who's working on the vision team, some of his work in the trailer for, uh, there's a cave shot in there, which is pretty awesome. Someone said, please no wetters. <laughs> yeah, I am terrified. So I just learned what that was. Oh, oh yeah, they're, they're disgusting. Like this, this big grasshopper thing. No, yeah, <laughs> can't handle it. Um, yes, so there is a swimming, as you could see um, earlier. Um, is there any permanent style of a base building in, in space? So, um, look, that's a, been a big question for people wanting to look at permanence. Um, you know, we definitely hear the community's feedback and we have a lot of uh, plans and ideas. We do want to make sure that we nail the session-based side of it. Uh, you know, being able to do permanent drops and things like that is, is absolutely technically possible, but we really want to make sure we nail that survival, ex uh, sorry, that session experience you know, first, um, but I think we definitely hear people's feedback on it. Yeah, I think the idea of, of keeping a drop perpetually running like your classic Minecrafts and such is, I mean, it's a non-trivial amount of time, but I think the, the important element for Icarus to really shine is to dial in that full loop of station and mm -hmm. planet and yeah. why you want to keep going back. Uh, w once, we've, w once we've really found that and made that sing, um, then it's, uh, I think we can definitely talk about the possibility of an alternate, you know, mode for longer. Yeah. We'll see yeah. how it works. and we really wanted to bring a, a, a real serious uh, look at the, you know, survival, survival genre. A real high fidelity. You know, uh, many of our dev team are seasoned AAA devs uh, with much more experience than me. And and I think, you know, so so we really want to give the the actual loop that we've got a real focus on before we just sort of throw things in. Uh, someone has a good question. Do structures persist between drops? So we actually save all the data that's happening on the drop to our central server. And we can use that however we want. Um, and we have some plans to do stuff with it um, that will be pretty exciting that, you know, we don't want to reveal too much yet. Yeah. Um, certainly if you... <coughs> the, the idea that we've got at the moment is the time that you're given on this prospect, that's theoretically all the time you have on the drop. Um, but depending on your mission, if you're doing a faction mission, stuff like that, you know, there may or may not be other people or you, you know, there's a lot of options we have for it. What we're trying to do is hyper-focus on a standard session for now with the idea that we might change it um, and you know, we might be able to do stuff later on. I'm sorry, I got to point out the safety bars. I'm, on the yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a really good that. idea. It's a really good idea until until that catches on. Fire. So we told you they've been playing a lot. <laughs> but you know, one thing one thing I really wanted to um, uh, was oh, to oh dear oh, oh geez, a tree fell on it. There right you now. go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just hear whooping and hollering. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. So as as faction, uh, sorry, as session making it session based gives us so many more options. It allows us to do things like say, okay, this is the game mode you're facing now. We could do other game modes. Future chapters don't need to be constrained to what we're doing now, and that's a really important point that I think we tend to gloss over because we're so used to talking about it. But if we wanted to introduce different game modes that have different rules around, you know, the players and and, and stuff like that. We totally can without mm. breaking people's experience. So, you know, our first three chapters are focused on PVE, um, you know, co-op, survival. Um, but, but yeah, you know, we can totally look at, at other things if we want. Awesome. Well, I think we should probably wrap up the, uh, the game side of things and uh, start to wrap up the stream. So what's a good recap, Brian, of what we've shown everyone today? Well, uh, I think it. Uh, I think it's important to uh, uh, to really focus on because I've heard a lot of questions. Oh, that's my favorite bit. The, Is it the, the waterfall? waterfall? The waterfall. I only <laughs> briefly got to see the waterfall too. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. I, um, 
I make a show the next time. I, I get the drive. Uh, I, I think it's important to focus on the question that comes up again and again about permanence and the yeah. idea of perpetual. Eight years now working exclusively in those kind of open, persistent mm -hmm. worlds. 100% amazing. I will say that the core survival mechanics, we've really we've really been dialing those in, folks, on that foundation is there. And the idea of sessionizing it, it, it's not a lack of permanence. The permanence moves from the planet to the, the player, the station. The player continuously going back and forth and, and building up the resources that you can bring to bear, the tools that you can bring down in your drop, changing how your drop is. And I think really leaning into the idea of you know your time in the hab, and that is your progression as a player. You know maybe we can explore more permanence, like affecting change in the hab. Maybe you know decoration, whatever the case may be. Letting that be kind of like in Tarkov, like your little mm -hmm. your little hub. Yeah, and you're you're going into those missions, and you're going in there with like drills. You know you're, you're yeah. going back. We're giving you a reason to go back yeah. into drops. You've still got this persistence between them with your character and your stuff. And you know, bringing you know, getting using your exotics to, to bring down vehicles, and you know, having to build infrastructure and bridges and things like that, so that you can get more throughput. That's I think much more compelling. Mm -hmm. And then we're giving you a reason to build structures. Because I know in Valheim, for me, it's so much better when my friends are like, "Hey, um, we need a building here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to do this boss. We need a building here." Oh, that attributes. Uh, menu is going too. That's, mm. that's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's changing. We're getting a talent system. So just just when you see that. Yeah. No, that's really awesome. So uh, we will be having another live stream, and we will cover um, other content. So you're not going to see the same content over and over again. Uh, we will speed things up a bit. Uh, we'll go a bit further uh, down the track. Maybe we'll do some um, forest fires. Maybe even hunt some animals, deer, We have to and check out the alpine biome and caves. Mm. Yes, so we've we got a lot... We have to burn of... stuff down. Mm -hmm. Forest fire for sure, yeah. Yep, we've got a lot planned for you and we're so excited. And also, we've got some behind the scenes uh, dev uh, interviews as well uh, coming up on our YouTube channel um, very, very shortly. So we've got a bunch of content coming up for you, the community, and we're really, really happy maybe, to get your feedback. Not. And... Uh, very excited. Very, very excited. I don't, I'm very excited. Um, we will be taking people's suggestions. So I know mm -hmm. on, on all our previous games, and you know, Brian is great for this, just hopping into people's streams. Yeah. So you know, we you know, join the, the dev streams, and these aren't just a marketing thing. We do want to get people's ideas. Yep. Um, you know, uh, like I was, I was streaming my little project the other day, and someone suggested an idea, and oh, that is terrifying. Oh, yeah. Oh, we oh, good. I don't think we were supposed you to show this. No. <laughs> But someone just got mauled by a bear. Oh, well, the bear's dead. The bear's dead. It's okay, everybody. Um, it's on the tiny screen. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we are reading your comments as we're going through here. And, uh, you know, one of the, the really fun parts about this is going to be able to get people's feedback on it before we get it out there. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to talk with the community on Discord. We want to talk with streamers. Uh, you know, we, we see Twitch and, uh, you know, our players in the community as a really important part of yeah. our development process. Yep, and we'll keep on going with that as well. Alrighty, so I think we're about time now. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you all here, um, seeing you in the chat, Twitch partners and the like. Thank you so much and we're really looking forward to dishing out more content for you and working with you all to make Icarus as amazing as possible. And uh, yes, go follow us on social media. Go to our website, surviveicarus.com. All of our links are there. Um, go to our Discord, discord.gg, Survive Icarus. Anything else that you, Brian and Dean, would like to add before we wrap things up? The tree's still on the roof. <laughs> Yeah, I just think it's awesome to, to, you know, I didn't, I know for me, and I think Brian feels the same way, we didn't want to go back out until we had something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now we've got something, we've invested a lot of time in the technology, um, and I'm glad we got the streaming capture, because you go on and look on the PCs and it's running buttery smooth, and then it's coming out choppy <laughs> yeah. through here. But, you know, this, this process is really important, and we think it's something... I don't know, that a lot of shoes haven't really done actually get in there with the community. So yeah. I think for me, it's just really exciting 
to to have that and I hope I hope we get to catch up with some of our you know friends who are streamers as well and actually talk through what are they looking for yeah. what kind of support do they need um, yep. you know to be able to bring content mm -hmm. um, and and also a plea if if anyone wants to use our trailer that we made in their content please do I saw there were a couple of people that were scared to include it in their YouTube videos or yep. play it on their stream you can play any of our content on YouTube any of our music any of that kind of stuff um, please use it and we actually have I think a, a content creator pack on survivacarist.com mm -hmm. that you can go and download and use it as much as you want yep that's it it's encouraged we really want to work closely with you and we hope that your content is amazing and we're going to help you make it as amazing as possible yeah so all our content that we produce people will be able to upload to their channels um, provide their own uh, commentary over top even if it's very negative you know that's fine so yeah We'll, we'll listen to it all. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> now we'll pretend to chat to each other.